What's up guys and welcome back to Seoul. Now if you caught our last video, it was all about the old historical things here in the city, but today we're modernizing. Today we're exploring some of the coolest, trendiest things to do in this city because let's be honest, this is one of the trendiest cities in the entire world. But before we get into all of that, we will get coffee first. Does that sound good to you? Oh yes. All right, let's go. coffee at a place called Mammoth Coffee Roasters and this is a place we've been coming a lot since we arrived here in Seoul for a few reasons. One, the coffee is amazing. We love the coffee here. Two, it is open at 8 a.m. whereas a lot of other coffee shops here open at noon and it's also spread out throughout the city so it's a great spot no matter where you are. All right, we got our coffees. Also, big shout out to our subscribers, Paula and Greg, for buying us these coffees through our Buy Me A Coffee page. We really needed a pick me up this morning if you can't tell my voice. And I know that these are gonna hit, and it's thanks to you guys. So thank you so much again for donating and buying us these coffees today. We really needed them. We're kicking things off today in an area of town called Hongdai, which is where we've been staying. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, we're actually going to get breakfast. It's not something that we normally do in our videos, but I found this place called Egg Drop Cafe, which looks like breakfast sandwiches. They're like trendy little breakfast sandwiches. So I figured we'd get something to put in our bellies before we really started kicking around the city. How do you eat them? They're sandwiches. These look insane. <laughs> they look so good. Now we gotta find a place to eat. Yeah, but there's no room in there. It's kind of funny, they give you the option to take away or eat in. But there's like four seats in there, so unless you're like by yourself, which the odds are so slim you're gonna get that room by yourself, then you kind of have to take out. So we're gonna find some seating somewhere here in Hongdai and have our sandwiches and then probably walk around the neighborhood and show you around because this area is really, really cool. There's sriracha all over the back. <laughs> all over, I'm so excited. Gosh, do you see this? Whoa! <laughs> I have no idea, but I did not expect that. I guess we'll have an audience for while we eat our yeah, sandwiches. Yeah, I guess. Eat. Here's a little preview. Wow. Just admire for a second. Oh my goodness. This is a awesome. masterpiece. How do I eat this? I don't know. You're just gonna have to go head first into it. It's gonna get all over my face. This is like a sweet egg. It's really? like salty and sweet. This is not gonna be flattering to you. Yeah. I got the bacon double cheese. These are huge. These are gonna be a little bit, it feels like they're gonna be a little tough to eat, but I'm gonna try. There's like a sweet flavor to it. Isn't there? I don't think it's the egg though. Is it the bread? I think it's the bread. Good grief, this is good. <laughs> Overall, I'd give it probably like, what, a seven out of 10? It's good, I think that's a fair score. You can go in, you can get out and eat it on the go. It's a little bit messy, but it's still very easy to eat while you're on the go. So I like it for that reason. So seven out of 10 for me. What about you, Hannah? It's too messy for on the go. <laughs> He's lying to you. Okay, well, I, I thought it was an on-the-go sandwich, but I guess not. Maybe my sandwich was too messy. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know there was sriracha all over the bag. You are so messy. I will say my sandwich was pretty messy, or maybe I'm just a messy eater. I'm not really sure, but I will say I got sriracha on the side. It was like 300 won for a side of sriracha, and it was not spicy at all. It was like sweet. Really? There was no spice to it. Not the sriracha I'm used to. As we mentioned earlier, we are staying in an area called Hongdai, and if you're looking for a cool place to get lodging while you're here, then you can't go wrong with this place. 
Long Dai is definitely the coolest, trendiest, and most vibrant neighborhood you'll find in the city. It's a hot spot for young folks, artists, and anyone really looking for a good time. The name Hong Dai comes from the Korean abbreviation of Han Gik University, which is right around the corner. There's a huge emphasis on expression in Hong Dai with street performers, graffiti art, and quirky boutiques to browse around in, and this place is a total playground for arts and culture. Personally, one of my favorite parts about this area is the amount of vintage shops. There are so many all over the place, and one of Trey and I's favorite pastimes is going around on a Saturday looking for old, cool t-shirts at different vintage shops and thrift shops in Nashville. Granted, the prices here are a little bit different than the prices that we were finding in Nashville, but you can still find some absolute gems. Oh my gosh, it moves too. They have every single kind of pop socket you would ever want. If you're looking for new pop sockets, come to come to Seoul. Hongdae Street. Come to Hongdae Street. Something you should know if you come here in the summer is it is extremely hot. You will need something to cool you off throughout the day more than just water, like cool your body temperature down. They have these neck freeze things that I've seen everywhere. I saw them in Japan. They also have handheld fans. I highly, highly recommend that you get one of these or a handheld fan because out exploring, you don't want to be in a mall all day. You want to see, see the stuff, so get one of these. And if you really want to be a pro, then you won't wait until the last day that you're here in order to buy one of those, like we did. Hong Dai is definitely a cool area to check out during the day, but honestly, it's still a little bit early and it will be going nuts a little bit later. So we're gonna check out a few other neighborhoods and then come back here a little bit later as the sun goes down. Sticking with the theme of New Seoul, one thing that you're gonna have no problem with in Seoul is getting around. The subway and the bus system here, the whole metro system here in Seoul, it's really, really efficient and really thorough. You'll find a bus stop just about everywhere that you are, and there are major metro stations in just about every neighborhood. One thing to keep in mind though, you'll be able to rely on Google Maps for public transit directions, but if you have to walk, you're gonna need something called Neighbor. It's an app called Neighbor. Here in South Korea, they do not have the walking directions for Google Maps. I think it's like the only country in the world that doesn't have Google Maps walking directions. So download Neighbor if you're looking to walk, but you can get by on public transit with Google Maps. Found the jewelry building. Another really great area of town is called Namdaman Market. It's basically like a labyrinth of different streets and alleyways that have all sorts of different goodies between shoes, clothes, accessories, jewelry. You can basically find anything that you need here. This area is not all about shopping though. It does have some really awesome street food and some different alleyways that have different types of traditional food that you can go to. But we're not necessarily that hungry at the moment because we had egg drops, so we're gonna pass on those. But if you're down here and hungry, then you definitely have options. I read online that this is where you can get a lot of traditional fish soups, a lot of traditional like grilled fish. So this is your traditional seafood spot. There How about that? <laughs> Right it smells incredible. All right, I've gotten my fill of window shopping, but now we need some views of the city. We haven't done that yet. Nope. So we're gonna go to the top of Seoul Tower because that's where the best views are. Now, if you're looking for ways to get up to the Seoul Tower, you have a few options. You can either walk or hike, or you can take the bus, or you can take the cable car, which is what we're gonna opt for. I think it's the most expensive of the three, but at the same time, it seems like it's gonna be cool. That says a lot coming from me because I'm scared of heights. And thankfully, it's only like three minutes long, and it's really that high, so we're gonna check it out, go up that way. 
Also, if it sounds like we keep running out of our breath, it's because it's really hot. And this little gradual incline, it's a little sneaky. travel for is to get out of our comfort zone, conquer our fears, or just embarrassingly deal with our fears. I've never been more impressed with myself in my life. I'm not bothered at all. This is, this is not bothering me in the slightest. What'd you say? Yeah, it wasn't long at all. It's like three minutes, not bad at all. Yeah, if you're scared of heights, this isn't, really isn't that bad. And I'm not saying that to sound tough. I'm saying it because it's true. It really wasn't too bad. I've never seen phone cases connected to these locks. Yeah. Like, this is so funny. These locks go so far too, these love locks. They're everywhere. That is insane. I don't get the whole, I don't get it. Yeah, if you know what the reason for the phone cases are for, then let us know. Not everything works out to plan. Unfortunately, we cannot film or take pictures up there. According to them, we couldn't do anything. You can't like take pictures or film or anything like that, which is kind of weird. So we're not gonna pay for that if we can't bring you along. So we're just gonna walk around this area and get some views of the vistas around us. I would say arguably this is also the same view. You're just up a little bit higher. Like the observatory is kind of this entire thing. be clear too they said that we couldn't take video or pictures with their big camera but I've seen on like Instagram and TikTok and even Google reviews that you can take pictures up there so don't be discouraged if you're just going up there with your phone I think you can still take photos and videos um, apparently there's a really cool bathroom so comment down below and put a picture if you can because I'd love to see the bathroom <laughs> I'll admit, the top of Namsun Mountain is very beautiful, even if we didn't make it up to the top of Seoul Tower. So we're gonna keep things moving because it's really hot and we're trying to find shade and cooler areas of the city. And what cooler place to go to than Gangnam? Now, if you're like us, then you probably had no idea what K-pop was until 2012. If you did, kudos to you, but we had no idea what it was until Sia unleashed Gangnam Style on the entire world. If you're unfamiliar with that, then I guess you had to be living under a rock in 2012 or something. It was the most popular song, most downloaded, most watched music video for like the early 2010s. It was a massive hit and it's named after Gangnam, which is the neighborhood that we're in now. Gangnam translates to south of the river. It's the most glitzy and glamorous part of Seoul, so naturally we're gonna stick out like sore thumbs, but that's okay because we wanna come see the Sai statue as well as browse around the huge mall that's over here. This is actually hilarious. There's some people over here doing the dance under the statue and the music's playing in the background. This is super funny. And it's really cool to see that they've memorialized his song with this statue because it seriously was the biggest song on the planet for like a year and a half. There are several funny things about this, but I think it's most funny that the song is playing all the time so you can do the dance while you're under there. And if you're ever wondering, the pointer finger, it does look like it's out. Like this is limp, but that's out, so it's like. Oh, there you go, hold on one more time. No, no. I was zoomed in too no, much. No, that's okay. Time. Hey, there we go. There are a 
ton of things that you can do in this mall. There's an aquarium. I think the, I'm gonna say this wrong, but the Keiko Friends flagship store is also here. But I think one of the coolest things that you can see while you're here is this library. I think it's so cool. It's very natural light. Yeah, I've never seen a huge library in the middle of a mall. It's crazy. Here in the mall, there's also a really awesome aquarium too that's really highly rated online. We don't have time for it, unfortunately, or you know we would go because absolutely love aquariums, but come and check that out. That's something that you can do if you're down here and you're trying to beat the heat like we are. You can always pop in there for an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Could just make it a whole day. I don't really know how big it is. We could spend a lot more time in this area of Seoul if we really wanted to, but we gotta go back and get cleaned up because we have a few more items on the agenda for today. All right, we are all cleaned up and we have an appointment over here in Hangzhou that I am super duper excited about. As I've said numerous times today, Seoul is one of the trendiest cities in Asia and if not one of the trendiest cities in the world. So if you're looking to take your fashion sense to another level, then this is the city you wanna be in. If you're like me, you don't really know what colors look best on you. You don't really know what color fits your personality. So they have something here in Seoul that will tell you all of the information that you need to know. And we're gonna be super trendy when we leave. All right. I gotta be honest, this is not something that we'd normally ever do, but Hannah's been saving some money aside for this. And basically ever since we booked our flight to Seoul, she's really wanted to do this. And it's not cheap, but we feel like it's gonna be pretty cool. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm kind of interested to see if they say I look good in any colors other than black. How bad would it be if they said that I didn't look good in black? That would be, that'd be catastrophic for my wardrobe. All right, so there was a little bit of a mix up in the times for when our appointment was. They accidentally double booked, which is totally okay because we have an hour that we can just kill at the next place that we actually had after the color analysis. We're just gonna move it up. So here in Seoul, you will find a lot of animal cafes, but one thing that we found that was fairly unique, we hadn't seen it anywhere else in Asia, was a meerkat cafe. So right down the road, thankfully, about a five minute walk, even though I'm out of breath, is a place called Meerkat Friends. All right, so we've hit another snag. Unfortunately, the Meerkat Cafe didn't work out for us. It was a little bit too steep of a price. It was like 36, 32,000 won for both of us, and that's like 25 bucks. We're already spending a lot of money today, and we've spent a lot of money already. So we are going to pass on that, and instead walk down to a cafe called Thanks Nature Cafe. It's one of the most popular spots for coffee here in the city, and we would have included it in one of our morning coffee situations, but unfortunately it opens at noon. So <laughs> that's how a lot of the coffee shops here are in Seoul. So we're gonna check it out now while we've got a little bit of time to kill, and then go do our color analysis. I did not know there were animals here. I didn't either. So we got two smoothies because honestly, it's a little late in the afternoon for me to be drinking my second cup of coffee. Same. And I would be up all night. So we got some smoothies. They're very refreshing because it is so hot outside. And I really like the ambiance in here. It's like kind of like a garden setting, which is kind of nice. This is one of the most popular coffee shops in Seoul. So make sure that you get coffee if you come here. Just don't come super late in the afternoon. We would have loved to include this, but we drink coffee in the morning. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, y'all. We are refreshed. We are ready to go. We're not going to let any of this bring us down. And we're going to go to get our color analysis now and hopefully only continue nice things. And she's going to tell us how great we look in every single color. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what makes me trendy. I personally think it's going to be more of the muted colors. But you never really know. You never know what she's gonna say. Charity, is your preference pure, pretty, natural, elegant, peaceful? A gentle. <laughs> it's gentle. Uh, gentle, chic, <laughs> definitely cool. We planned this pretty last minute, so it's honestly not shocking that there's so many appointments. It was really difficult to find one that we could, one, make an appointment for, two, they had appointments available, and three, they spoke English. This was the only time that was available, and it got double booked. Oops. Probably our fault. It might be. Barbie 
be coming out. Now I, I know, think right? that's appropriately. <laughs> I have both, but I primarily think I wear silver most. So I'm nervous about this. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's see. <laughs> Very confident. I, I'm, gonna, I'm totally cool. Oh my gosh. I think charcoal as well. Charcoal contrasting. That's terrible news. <laughs> okay. So it's not good. <laughs> Look at how beautiful that is. Oh yeah. I wanted to do it again. <laughs> that was such a fun experience. I felt like we were both really nervous and we didn't really know what to expect, but she made us so comfortable. Jessica, you were amazing. Thank you so much. And also, we planned this perfectly because we have a wedding in a few months, so now we know how to look so good at this wedding. We're coming in style, Dan and Justine. Coming for you. All right, after all that, I've gotten a little bit hungry, and thankfully, we are in a city that has some of the best food in the entire world. If you're thinking of Korean food, then you're probably already thinking of barbecue or chicken. And the first two nights that we were here, we got both of them each night, not all at once, with our friends Haley and Zach, and we're coming back to another chicken spot that's really, really popular here in Seoul. We're at a place called Kyo Chan Chicken, and honestly, I'm so excited. We've been here once already, and I've been thinking about it a lot. If I'm being honest, they don't have ranch, and some of their wings could be game changers of ranch. But I digress because it's amazing anyway. <laughs> and also, we're gonna get some beers with it because if you're in Korea, you have to get chicken and beer. It's here. Look at it. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be so good. So good. And so they also come with uh, the kimchi, like I discussed, it's like kind of a radish. It's a little bit sweeter than I thought it would be, honestly, but it's still, it's still fine if you're looking for something to cleanse the palate, but I'm so excited. I think the biggest thing that I get excited for here is because the wings are really crispy. They're like double fried. So there's this place in the U.S. that I refuse to go without one of my buddies, Tanner, and my other buddy, Justin. It's a, a place called Wing Nuts in Buffalo, New York. I, I don't know when we're ever going to go, but I imagine this is the closest to Wing Nuts that I'll ever find. I'm really excited to dive into this. We're probably not going to film a lot of ourselves because it gets really messy on your hands. So we're probably going to jump to the end of the meal, but we can already tell you it's going to be delicious. Y'all. So good. Here in Hongdae, you've got no shortage of things to observe. It feels kind of like everything's trying to grab your attention. You've got cool storefronts, loud music from bars, you've got arcades with winning sounds, you've also got pop music all around you. K-pop is king in South Korea, and up and down the street you'll see performers singing and dancing, and usually there's a pretty big crowd around these people. Did you leave your sunglasses at the restaurant? I don't think I left them there though. I don't know where they What do they look like? They're black. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. That is so embarrassing for you. <laughs> that is brutal. I know you were. <laughs> Golly. You can find a lot of things down here on Hungai Street, like so much stuff. And a lot of it is sweets. And we've gotten a few different kinds with our friends Haley and Zach when they were here. But there's one thing that we haven't tried yet, and Trey and I are both suckers for some ice cream. So... Ice cream cone coming right up. The pictures of this ice cream is like makes it look very, very pointy. It's almost like an elf on the shelf, like the hat. So I don't know, we're gonna try it. Ooh, 
Oh my gosh, it's even bigger than I thought it'd be. You have to eat it really fast. I'm getting a brain freeze like really bad. <laughs> Alright guys, so in case you haven't noticed, Soul can pretty much do it all. It does an unbelievable job of embracing and honoring its past while also kind of pushing the envelope on what the future looks like. I've had an amazing couple weeks here. We've been here for a little while and I got to see some friends, got to see a lot of this city, but I'm really excited to see what the rest of South Korea looks like. So, we'll catch you guys in a few days when we head a little bit further south. See ya!